Alrighty, folks, a very good evening and an abrupt start to tonight's edition of Good Day Grenada, the evening edition. I'm George Grant saying thank you very much for joining us for tonight's edition. And you know that uh, on Wednesday mornings, we usually have a good pity Martinique friend, uh, Sharon, sitting right here with us. Well, guess what? She ain't here tonight. Hold on, hold on. She ain't sitting here. But she is with us. She's going to be joining us remotely in just a wee bit. You're going to see her. We got some stuff to talk about before uh, we get to Sharon. And uh, just let me uh, take a look here and uh, see what's going on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta 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 I'm just checking to uh, make sure that the feed, yeah, the feed is going out. Yes, there it is. So now that we've got the preliminaries out of the way, a couple of things. Tonight we're, we're just going to do things a little bit differently. We're not following the usual format tonight. And one of the reasons for that is that we still have not yet received the national report from the Government Information Service. So, um, I'm not sure it's going to come in before uh, the broadcast is over. If it does, we'll try and sneak it on there. But there's a lot to uh, talk about besides that. And uh, one of the, I'm, I'm, I'm going to toss these out right now, and then uh, when, when we bring Sharon in, I'm sure we're going to be talking a little bit more about that, right? It's actually going to turn into a, a conversation. One of the things I want to share with you is a comment which appeared on Facebook today. You know, this may not be a big deal, but uh, I thought it would be interesting to share this with you. I'm sure that. Uh, you folks know that down in Guyana, they're having a heck of a time. Boy, I hope things really pan out for them because it would be a shame right after the great news about their oil find, and not just find, these folks have already begun exporting oil. Um, you have this whole hullabaloo about uh, the election results. and. You may have heard in yesterday's post-cabinet briefing that the Prime Minister of Grenada and some other dignitaries are going to be going down to uh, Guyana to try and bring a resolution to the issue down there. And uh, when that was announced yesterday, a number of people went, wow, you got to be kidding. And so the dialogue began on social media. Well, I want to share one of the comments I saw on social media that uh, I thought you might get a little chuckle out of. It's very short. It says here, how is it that regional prime ministers who have had questions raised by international observers about aspects of elections in their countries and did nothing about it are heading to Guyana to be a part of the talks for resolution of the current impasse surrounding Guyana's elections. Yeah. How are they supposed to guide fairness? one of the questions being asked. Somebody please tell me because I am baffled. I thought that was cute. I thought that was cute. And it's a legitimate question. I mean, look at what happened in Dominica just a couple months ago. Um, people were calling for election or electoral reform, which never happened. And then uh, after the elections, I think it was the president who came out and said, you know, there should really be electoral reforms here in Dominica. No, no. After the fact, sir, 
after the fact? Well, look at what's happening down in Guyana right now. And I think you need to be paying attention because our elections are not that far away. What, two, three years? Huh? So? Okay, so that's uh, about the Guyanese elections. Now, last night we talked quite a bit about that cruise ship that uh, was <laughs> not allowed to uh, birth here in Grenada, the Costa Magica. Well, our friend who gave me the heads up about this yesterday morning, a uh, person is based all the way out in uh, Martinique. And she told me about this and I looked into it and I shared with you what I found out from a tour operator, from the Grenada Tourism Authority, uh, from <laughs> the ship's agent. And uh, well, you also heard what uh, both the health minister and the prime minister had to say at yesterday's post-cabinet briefing. And uh, you're probably still confused, as I am, as to what really happened. Uh, in one vein, we heard that uh, the ship made the decision on its own not to come here. And uh, we hear the Prime Minister and the Health Minister saying they were turned away. So you go figure. Well, our friend in uh, Martinique provided me with a little update today, another very short update, but I think you might be interested in this as well. Um, it simply says that Several suspected cases of coronavirus have been reported on board the Costa Magica. The Prefecture and Regional Agency of Health refuse the berthing of the cruise ship tomorrow in Fort de France while awaiting the results of tests which will be done off the coast. And she winds it up by saying, thank you, Grenada, for protecting our fragile population. Now, what I gather here is that she's uh, saluting us here, and by us I mean the government of Grenada, if in fact they were the ones who actually turned away the ship. And uh, now people in Martinique are gonna have to deal with that. And I couldn't help but ask myself, could the fact that the Prime Minister and Health Minister said that, yes, we turned away the ship, uh, could they have probably known that there were suspected cases of the virus on board? Don't know. Not that it really matters now, does it? Huh? Okay. Time now to take a look. Let's take a look at this lady. No, she's all settled. Hello there, Sharon. Good evening. Good evening, George. What brings you to Pity Martinique today, Sharon? I'm curious. Boy, you're frozen and rock solid there. Um, I'm, frozen. I'm, I'm not surprised. I know how unreliable okay. the internet service is in Pity Martinique, so I'm really not surprised that she is frozen. But just a couple more. Oh, there she goes. There she goes. I'm here. I'm so How are you doing, girl? I am. Um, well, you know, Pretty Manic is my hometown. Yeah. And then uh, let me get a little closer to this gentleman so we can see. So, in um, in a couple of months, we have the regatta. So we have, I have with me Gary Blair. You can't see Gary? I'm only seeing half of, Ga not even half of Gary. I, I certainly hope uh, Gary <laughs> if you could just turn your cam, touch your camera a little bit or pan your camera a little bit, we may get uh, a, a better camera. view. Hello, Gary. You tell me because I can see that I'm frozen. So I guess you can hear me, but I'm frozen. I'm hearing you, but uh, yeah, you're frozen solid. Okay, well, I, I really came to Pitamarnik for a number of reasons. Um, 
One, I needed to de-stress. So I needed to get away from Grenada for a little while. I'm tired of hearing Corona and Trump. <laughs> and two, two um, I attended a meeting that with the fishermen. So we're going to be trying to get some help for the fishermen in Peter Martinic to, um, well, the building is there already. So to, to, to get an ice, because at the moment, the fishermen from Peter Martinic have to buy ice in Grenada and Caracou and all over the place. So if they form a cooperative and have their own fish house, that would be so much better. Okay. And um, with me, Gary Blair. Gary is the president of the regatta committee. So I took this opportunity to invite him on to the program so he could tell us a bit about the plans they have for the upcoming regatta. Okay, I'm glad so that you did. Gary. Gary, this is George. Good, good night, George. And how are you? Pretty good, man. Good evening. Nice to meet you electronically. Hello, Gary. Looks like we've lost them. I'm seeing, now we're seeing both of them, but we're not hearing either one of them. Are you guys serious? Pity Martin Meeks Internet. Boy, let me tell you. John and Carrie Koo must be saying, wow, we're not the only ones who have this hassle. But look at that, look at that. Hey, frozen solid. All right, I'll tell you what. I'm going to take a quick little break here and uh, see if we can get them re resolved. Not much I can do from this end because that, uh, that issue is obviously out there in Carrie Koo. Uh, da, 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 hmm. Uh, oh boy. Oh boy. COVID-19 spreads from person to person through the droplets that are produced when someone coughs or sneezes, which makes it easy to spread between people in close contact. Now let's get prepared to stay healthy. To reduce your chance of catching or spreading COVID-19, practice these simple everyday preventative measures. Droplets can also land on surfaces, so ensure that you wash your hands frequently for a minimum of 20 seconds or sing the happy birthday song twice. Avoid touching your face, especially your eyes, nose and mouth. If soap and water are not readily available, use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer with an alcohol content between 60 and 90%. 70% is ideal. When you cough or sneeze, cover your nose and mouth with a flexed elbow or a tissue. Dispose of the tissue immediately and then wash your hands. <laughs> if you notice someone has a fever and cough or other symptoms of respiratory illness, avoid close contact when possible. Let's all do our part to ensure that each and every Grenadian remains healthy. Our health is our collective responsibility.
folks all right we're back now just got off the phone with Sharon and boy they are having a terrible time up there let me just let me show you this just in case you didn't believe me take a look at this this was the last we got from Sharon and uh, Gary out there in Pity Martin Nate it is terrible it is terrible so we have decided that uh, we're not going to continue with our conversation with these folks tonight um, it, it just doesn't make sense. It really, really doesn't make sense. So, I'm hoping that since we're not, we're not going to bring you the national report either, because we, we ain't got that either. It hasn't come in yet from uh, the GIS. But I'm hoping that you guys on uh, Facebook will keep me sort of preoccupied for the next little while. Um, let me uh, take a look here and see who's there. Bradley Vespray says, greetings and salutations, George and classmates. And his better half is along with him, Carlene Vespray, saying, Nighty George and classmates, good to see you guys. Have we ever met? Not sure, not sure. Mr. Oswald Darbo, where's the PLA tonight, Oswald? He's, uh, he's saying good evening. Ken Youngblood is watching. Kathleen Thomas is saying nighty night to all you guys. And there's good old Ma Mags, as usual. Uh, Karen Bowen is there. And Dexter Miller says, Gary, you need to get Digicel. It's better here. <laughs> OK, doing a sales pitch, aren't you, Mr. Miller? Uh, T.F. Richards and Frank D. Alexander, also along with us, Deidre Tillich, Bethel, and Ryan Jabon. Now, Ryan apparently didn't know that we had changed from uh, 9 o'clock on weekday mornings to 8 o'clock on weekday evenings. And he was in touch with me this morning. And uh, during that little dialogue that we had on Messenger, he said that uh, he usually gets to bed at 8 o'clock. Can you believe that? People in Orlando go to bed at 8 o'clock in the evening? You guys got to be kidding. 
Not afraid that uh, the virus is going to sneak up on you if you go to bed that early? Stay up, man, and keep watch. Okay? TF says, George, uh, I'm just sending out a call for us as a people to open up to someone when we need help. And do not let this word pride cause us to have sad days like the family of Jonesy. May his soul rest in peace. God only knows. Yeah. TF, that's sad. And for those who may not know what you're talking about, a couple of days ago, Jonesy uh, lost his life. This man was an employee of uh, McIntyre Brothers. And um, from what I gather, he may have been having some issues um, not related to work, just life in general. And the way it looks now is like he uh, may, I say may, because I do not know for sure, may have committed suicide. Uh, apparently the body was found floating in the lake just around midday today. Uh, it's the talk of the town. Another talk of the town. My condolences to his family. Ryan says, good evening, George and friends. I am here and locked on. Nice man laptop let oh yeah, you're talking about that ad from land. That's a sort of branch of uh Hubbards. Um yeah, they got some nice stuff. Nicole Gittens is saying, Bonsoir, hello there, Nicole. Nice to hear from you. Gloria Hobbins is there as well. She hasn't said anything, but she's just uh, watching on. And Ryan Jabon says, yeah, man, your stream is nice and strong and clear. Well, that's interesting, uh, Ryan. I, I know that, that we're having problems in Kariku, okay? Yes, not Kariku, Pity Martinique. But just a moment ago, let me check and see if it's still happening. My stream and the, hey, there it goes. My stream indicator here is going like dee, 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 which tells me that the internet is tonight. Yeah. Pitsy. It's Pitsy. Uh, look, right now it's back on. Beautiful, solid red, streaming. But uh, in a moment it's probably going to start going, hello there, George. Yeah, well, so say Lee. One of these days, we'll have real life internet here in Grenada. Uh, ta -ta. Ryan says, oh, you can buy the man, the man bags at Huggins? I thought it was uh, Hubbard's. Probably know something I don't. Maria St. Bernard's there and Ian Reggae Master Jones also there. Um, Margaret says, Ryan is right. Early to bed, early to rise makes a man or woman healthy, wealthy, and wise. That explains my condition, doesn't it, Mags? God will get you for that. Yeah? You know, now that I'm doing the program uh, in the evening, I am actually finding it possible to hit the sack about midnight which is like two to three hours earlier than I normally retire. I usually get to bed like two, three o'clock in the morning, sometimes four o'clock, depending. Huh. Okay. Um, Margaret says, Ryan, I know that only too well. Whenever I don't get enough sleep, my stomach goes on a rampage. Been like that since I was a kid. Yep. I knew there was something wrong with you, Megs. Now we're even. Okay. Good evening, Jackie O. Uh, Ryan says, you sound like next door. Well, 
as long as you guys are seeing us fine, that's, uh, that's good. But, well, there I am. But you saw the other frozen stuff there a little while ago. Frozen solid. Um, Sharon has promised, however, that uh, before she leaves Spitty Martinique to return to Grenada, she's actually going to do a little interview with uh, Gary. And then uh, when she gets back here, we can share that with you about the upcoming regatta at the end of May. I think it's the last weekend in May into uh, June. Not that our internet here is a whole lot better, but to be honest, to be honest, we've been getting some really, really good service in recent times from uh, Digicel. And you know, it, it's not just about whether or not the internet is stable. Um, for social media and streams like we're doing, it's very important that you have uh, pretty good bandwidth, okay? It's one thing to have a stable internet stream, but uh, you also need to have pretty high bandwidth. And I think, I'm, I'm learning that uh, a lot of people, the, the regular package that is offered by a lot of these companies is somewhere between two and five uh, megs. Well, I actually use 20 megs going up and 50 megs coming down. And that's the reason why the stream's going out pretty good now. And yes, I do thank Digicel. I like to give credit where credit is due, and I thank Digicel for that. Uh, let's turn back here to social media for just a minute. Uh, <laughs> Margaret says, no comment, George. <laughs> as soon as the program's over. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, Ryan agrees with me here. He says that uh, bandwidth matters. Good evening, Christopher Penny, Ken Christopher Penny Keith Jones. Is that your real name? Christopher Penny Keith Jones, or, or are they two separate persons? Coyle Nash is also there. Um, okay. So folks, tell you what, it's up to you now to keep me here, but it's, uh, let's see, 27 minutes after the hour. Um, it's up to you. I'm not going to sit here and just babble for the next uh, 33 minutes or so, so you'd better come up with a couple of things that you want to talk about. Okay? Please do. Please do. Uh, Ryan Jabon is saying, uh, are you 4G or 5G, George? I'm not even sure that 5G exists in this place. And it's probably going to be quite a while before 5G does. Seems like there's a little bit of controversy outside there about possible dangers of 5G. I have not thoroughly investigated that, so I won't say yay or nay to it. But uh, as far as I know, we're, we're 4G here in Grenada still. Okay. So I await your ideas and your suggestions because I'm running out of steam. I do hope to hear from you. Uh, there's a lot of topical stuff happening out there. Um, <laughs> Margaret says, 5G in Grenada? Yes, Max. <laughs> Uh, I hope that whoever said that, let's, uh, um, let's see here, uh, who, who, who said 5G? Yeah, Ryan was asking about 5G. Um, Ryan, I hope you're, uh, I really hope you're not holding your breath. And he says he's 5G. Ryan is in Orlando, and he's 5G. Um, T.F. Richard says, George, What's your take on the visit of the Prime Ministers to Guyana? Well, you know, we actually started the program with that, TF. Um, <laughs> curious. Uh, I don't know. How can these people go to Guyana to tell them 
how to legitimize their electoral process when they ignore legitimizing the process in their own countries. I don't know. I'm, I'm probably missing something here. I'm probably missing something here. Dexter Miller says the people of Guyana have to resolve their own issue. <sighs> Didn't we say the same about Venezuela, Dexter? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, I, I have become very cynical in my old age. But to be very honest with you, I can't lie to you. I can't. I can't look into your eyes and lie to you. I just don't trust anything politicians tell me anymore. I'm sorry to be that painfully honest, but I cannot lie to you. T.F. Richard says, where is it? The same thing occurred in Venezuela months ago, and a totally different stance was taken. Yeah? T.F., I'm sure you understand what I mean. You can relate to what I'm saying. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Jackie O says, yes, it's everywhere. Yesterday, we learned about an exposure on the street where I live. Jackie O, where's that? Is that Washington? Uh, is that DC? By the way, did you guys hear that today, the World Health Organization finally declared this whole thing to be a pandemic, eh? No joke, no joke, folks. And uh, we still haven't seen the end of it. I think it's going to get a little bit worse before it does get better. The good news is that apparently the incidence of uh, the virus seem to be on the decline in China. Very happy for these people, really, really happy. Um, Dexter Miller says, yes, we did. Dex, uh, thanks for responding, but I, again, it slipped me. I'm not sure exactly what you're responding to, but anyhow. Ryan Jabon says, uh, he, <clears throat> excuse me, here in Florida, universities have gone completely online teaching and students asked to stay home because of the COVID-19 virus. Yes, I did hear that. And uh, there are a lot of businesses that are closing their doors. Yeah. Universities are going to be offering online courses. Uh, the churches are going to be modifying their rituals. It's a lot happening. It's a lot happening. Uh, <laughs> Ryan says, uh, yep, pandemic and pandemonium. You know, I think we still need to be realistic. Yes, be on guard, but we still need to be realistic about this. I know a lot of people came down on President Trump when he said something the other day about 36,000 people, I think, died in the last year from the, the regular flu. And uh, as of now, I think only, uh, I think 4,000 plus have died of the virus. He does have a point. He does have a point. Whether you agree with a man or not, give credit where credit was due, because that is a reality. Now, maybe by the time a year from the inception of this COVID-19, maybe a year from now, there may be 36, 40, 50,000. I don't know. Um, I've read reports where it's expected that 60% of the people in the United States will contract the illness. 
I don't know. And I don't profess to know. TF says, the female prime minister was given Guyana's second highest honor recently. Plus, the country is now oil rich. So with the apparent fallout from Alba, they're looking to Guyana. Time alone will tell. Margaret says, the numbers are beginning to rise in the English-speaking Caribbean. Jamaica now, ooh, Jamaica now has two cases. I knew of one up to last night, Mags, but obviously another one today. Guyana reportedly has one suspected case, and the patient died today. Yeah. And from what I'm hearing, this thing is uh, more lethal with people who are over 70 years old. Hmm. I still have a couple of years to get there. Ryan says, my Vegas and London trips are off. I am homebound. You know, the airlines are canceling uh, a lot of flights, at least domestically. And I learned sometime this morning that Delta is not going to be flying into Grenada after, I think it's the 19th of April. I do not, I repeat, I do not know whether this is COVID-19 related, but that's what I was told this morning who, by somebody who had spoken to an employee of uh, Delta. Ryan Margaret says, well, the NCAA just announced that the games will be played without the fan. <laughs> Can you imagine this? Uh, the games will be played without the fans. And if you happen to be uh, an athletic fan, be prepared to watch on television or on social media. And by the way, I guess you also heard that uh, the Grenada Invitational has been postponed, uh, I would imagine, indefinitely. That was supposed to take place uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, ta -ta -ta, Ryan, uh, Ryan says, but POTUS is, t is too fake new Sorry, Ryan, I do not understand. He goes on to say, Guyana is going to be rich because of oil fines. No kidding. Uh, whatever happened to our oil? Whatever happened? Have we started digging yet, drilling yet? Well, uh, <laughs> uh, Margaret says, or cursed as a result of the oil find. Interesting comment, Max. You know, I've, I've been puzzled about what all this hoopla about oil is about. Again, there seems to be so much hypocrisy. On one hand, you have us being told that we have to protect the environment and we should go green. Hmm? turn to solar energy, wind energy, geothermal energy, and all of that stuff. Because oil is really, really messing up our environment. And yet here we're going, man, hell to skelter after oil. Huh? I don't, I don't know, I just don't, See, the, there's probably some sort of rationale. I just don't get it. And if you tell me it's just moolah, money, then I think it's sad if that's all that matters to you. Can you imagine having all the money in the world and a totally degenerated environment in which to live? Huh? Does it make any sense? Uh, 
I don't know, I just don't think like a lot of people. Uh, <laughs> oh. TF says audio. Those say John say, eh? <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Uh, thank you, uh, TF. Uh, Rudy Dolan. I haven't seen Rudy Dolan in quite a while, but it's nice to see that you're on there. Thank you very much, sir. Hope everything's okay with you. Um, Ryan says the airlines and cruise ships are, are, are asking for money from the federal government in the United States. I saw that too, yeah. Today I was thinking, you know, when, when this thing eventually dies down, and I'm sure it will, okay, I think our lifestyles, in many cases, will be dramatically readjusted, changed. And I saw somebody making a point uh, on social media, I think it was yesterday. Uh, actually, it was on my, uh, my WhatsApp forum. Somebody was saying that uh, maybe this is an opportunity to start focusing on agriculture. You know, come hell or high water, we got to eat. We got to eat. And uh, that person was right. Maybe this is a tip-off to start thinking about agriculture. Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. Enid says, good question, George. I wonder where the oil disappeared to. <laughs> I don't know, but if you find out, please let me know. 415-0631 or info at civicgrenada.com. Let me know. I'm very, very curious. Uh, ta -da -da -da. TF says, but George, I listened to MTV News tonight, and I hasten to ask, what's a smart hospital? I didn't see MTV News tonight. A smart hospital? TF, you might want to share with us what they were talking about, because uh, I don't know. Um, it's, a, it's a hospital which you can use to uh, receive emails and uh, you know, talk to your friends, video conference. Don't say George said that. Uh, Ryan says, rich developed countries sing that ecology song, but poor countries think differently. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, the damage that's being done to uh, the environment is being felt more so by us, the small fry. Um, many of you probably saw a video that was on social media just over the past couple of days about the destruction of the mangroves here in Grenada. We just don't give a hoot anymore. Somebody comes along and says, I got a couple of bucks. Yaman. Yeah, I'll take it. Yeah. Regardless of what it does to the environment. That mentality sucks. <sighs> T.F. Richard says, well, hello, Mr. Dolan. Hope all is well. This is Theo from Bolio. Yeah. Hey, by the way, Rudy, say hi to, uh, say hi to your brother for me, Hugh. Talked to him last week. Margaret Francis says, not interesting, George. There is actually a phenomenon known as the curse. Every single country that has oil has one problem or another. Loads of studies and articles on it. Look at Guyana today and the elections. People are now ready to kill each other. You think the warring parties are not eyeing that oil money? <laughs> amen, Mags. Amen, amen, amen. Mula, Mula. Can anybody be that dense? Yeah, the proof is there. <sighs> TF says, Mags, you are so correct. Anytime something involving money arises, 
people, people's demeanor change and they get evil. Yeah. Yeah. Ricardo Keynes Douglas has joined us. Hi, Ricky. Good to see you. Kenny John is there. TF says the minister of Kariku states that they were improving the hospital services in Kariku and getting it up to a smart hospital. TF, like I said, you know, I don't believe anything politicians tell us. I really don't. Uh, sometimes they are so incoherent. You sit and wonder do they listen to themselves? <sighs> ah, I see, Sharon. Sharon's joined us now online. Well, we didn't have you online a little while ago, but we do have you online now. Uh, oh, still frozen. She's saying good evening. Jackie O says, smart hospital needs smart people to work. Smart working equipment, management, and smarter government. <laughs> Clear. <laughs> oh, Jackie, you behave yourself. Jackie you says, clearly, Grenada will not qualify for a smart hospital. Yeah. Uh, at least, Jackie, not until we decide to pay attention to uh, the healthcare system in this place. You know, paying attention to the healthcare system doesn't just mean getting equipment and medicine and you know technology and that type of stuff. I think one of the most crucial needs is people who end up having people who understand healthcare, healthcare management. Yeah, very important. But that's. It's important, but not here. Not here. Uh, Ryan, uh, Ryan, by the way, is uh, I think he's a retired nurse, and also he does some medical teaching in uh, Orlando. He says, "Yep, smart hospital built on an ICT environment." Well, I guess that's the way things are going nowadays. You know, everything's being done electronically. Mm, zap, zap. You can be in one part of the world and totally on the other side of the world. A diagnosis is done in a heartbeat. Yeah. Yeah. Sharon says, so I taped an interview with Gary. So sorry we had such lousy reception. Yeah, Sharon, we missed you. Just make sure you're back here on Wednesday so we don't have to go through this. TF says, but George, you have to listen to them. That's where we get our version of America. That's, <laughs> ah, that's where we get our version of America's home videos, America's funny home videos or Saturday Night Live, yeah. Thanks guys for maintaining your sense of humor under the prevailing circumstances. <laughs> uh, Ryan says, funny thing, you can't eat money. Take qualifications, verbalizations with a pinch of salt. I have given up on taking it, Ryan. I have given up. Uh, ta -da. TF is asking, you sure it's just a pinch of salt? Uh, <laughs> Sharon says, more like a pound of salt. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Uh, Agatha Jordan, hello there. Agatha, how are you? Agatha, I tell you what, we're supposed to be in Karaku later on this year, girl, and uh, one of my uh, top priorities will be to meet you. You've got to meet this lady. Uh, Jackie O says, maybe I could come back home and help. I have a master's in healthcare management and an MBA. 
Jackie? Yeah, that would be wonderful, Jackie. But you know what? You wouldn't be the first to come back. There are a lot of people here with extremely good talents, well qualified, like you. They are being denied the opportunity to serve. Yeah. It's not as if we couldn't pay them. If they are not of a certain political persuasion, damn it, you just don't get to serve. And the whole country suffers. That's shameful. Isn't that shameful? That's what we've come to in this place. Qualified people sitting around on their, on their thingies. Agatha Jordan says, a very good night to you, Georgie. <laughs> I like being called that. I haven't been called that in a long time, but it's nice. Thank you very much, Aggie. Uh, Ryan Jabon says, telemedicine, GG, has many crucial benefits for a country, like Grenada. Example, diagnosis, treatment, prognosis, etc. Telemedicine has a lot of benefits. But let us not forget good old Mother Nature. Hmm? She kept us in pretty damn good shape before telemedicine came along. Mm -hmm. Jackie says, excuse me, TF says, Jackie, you have to be politically aligned to make it in this place. Otherwise, crap will smoke your pipe. <laughs> That's the point I was trying to make, TF. Thank you, sir. You said it very eloquently. Uh, and Agatha Jordan says, I would like to meet you too. I hope it's before June. What's happening in June? Huh? I don't know. I can't tell you yet. And uh, one of the things that's been keeping me away from going back up to Caracou to do the program is the quality of the internet that uh, Sharon and Gary were subjected to tonight. You know, I sympathize with people who have to sit and watch that buffering, that jerky, jerky stuff. It's just dreadful. Oh, this is a Jack, Jackie, Jackie responds to TF by saying, I go stay put in Coronaville. <laughs> ah, Jackie, Jackie. And that's our loss, isn't it? Uh -huh. Ryan says, your frustration level will be off the meter if you did that, sister. Yeah. Dexter Miller says, St. Vincent just announced their first case of COVID. Ooh. Ooh. Thank you, Dexter. So it's gotten to St. Vincent. It's coming down the road, started where? Santo Domingo uh, or the Dominican Republic, um, Jamaica, St. Bartholomew, uh, St. Martin, Martinique, St. Vincent. Hey, St. Vincent is just a stone throw up that way. Okie doke. Uh, and Margaret is uh, confirming that she says St. Vincent has announced its first case of coronavirus. Yeah. And Dexter gives a source as eyewitness news. Uh, T.F. Richard says, drink carob beer instead and not Corona. <laughs> Can you imagine having a name like Corona beer with uh, the current crisis out there? I wonder, uh, I wonder how their sales are doing. That'd be curious, you know, I don't know. Um, oh, okay, Agatha says, uh, the reason why she was hoping that we'd meet before June is because she's gonna be in the UK. 
let's see, we're at the, coming up on the middle of March, April, May, ooh, don't leave as much time, do you? Okay, we'll see what we can do at Gatha. Uh, just don't stay too long in the UK, can't, can't afford to do without you. Um, uh, TF says, are you serious? Not sure what he's talking about. Margaret says, that's what I meant when I told Jackie, when I told Jackie O that it was closer than she thinks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jackie O says, <laughs> she freed Crapo. <laughs> I did too as a kid, couldn't stand frogs. She says, I grew up in Mount Rich and lived in Tempe. Afraid crapple bad. <laughs> ah, ah. T.F. Richard says, George, where is John from? Where is John from Kariaku? I spoke to John actually today. Um, he's okay, but you know, John has been going through a lot of frustration with his internet and I think, <laughs> For the time being, anyway, he's just given up, but uh, he's had it. Um, Anthea, hello, Anthea. I also spoke with Anthea today. My goodness, so nice to see you tonight, Anthea. TF says, uh, mm -mm. TF says, Rot was, who's Rot? Rot was reported that their sales dropped, George. Don't know if it's factual, but. It was in the American news. I guess you're talking about the Corona, Corona beer, the sales have dropped. Not surprised. Uh, and Agatha says, call me Aggie. All my friends do. You know, that's interesting. Uh, there's a lady who has worked with us for more than 25 years. And her name is Agatha. But I can't recall ever calling her Agatha. We always called her Aggie. Uh, but then I've known this lady for more than 25 years. So when I saw, when I got to meet Agatha Jordan online, I, I wanted to, I actually initially I think I did call her Aggie. And I wanted to keep on calling her Aggie, but you know, some people are very touchy about, well, I don't know you well enough, you know, to call me by my pet name, you know. So I had been saying, Agatha, Agatha, but girl, you just made me feel so good by saying, call me Aggie. Thank you, Aggie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's, it's like me, you know. <sighs> Those of you who've been listening to my Sunday program for the last 15 years, you know how it drives me gaga when people call me Mr. Grant. I am just George, little guy with the short pants from uh, La Bay, George. And then people try to explain to me, well, you know, we call you Mr. Grant uh, out of respect. And my question is, if you call me George, is it because you disrespect me? I don't think so. I really don't. So hello, Aggie. Ah, ta -da, ta -da. Margaret says, a mutual friend of George and I gave me the heads up earlier this evening and told the, uh, and told the announcement would be made later this evening. I guess she's talking about that, uh, that case in St. Vincent. And Peter Bishop has just shown up just in time to verify. He says St. Vincent has announced its first case of the virus person visited the UK recently. Yee boy. Okay. Um, Margaret says, Peter Bishop, interesting. It. The first Jamaican case also came from the UK. Hmm. Uh, T.F. Richard says, Peter, you read the article of the new today on the RGPF? How sad, but not surprising. Not sure what they're talking about. Okay, folks. Well, you know, I can't believe it. We actually did the 37, uh, 33 minutes. Thank you. See, you guys can be really good when you want to be. Hmm. 
And let's be honest, you've never let me down. It's not the first time I have found myself having to fill blank air, but you've always delivered. And for that, I'm most appreciative. Thank you. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Margaret says, the St. Vincent briefing is on live now. Okay, okay. TF says, so George, why when all you, when all you these country people come to town, all you do go back up? <laughs> Only this afternoon, I was apologizing to someone for going to Grenville. I grew up in Grenville from the age of two weeks until I was about 12 years old. And to be honest with you, I probably go to Grenville once or at most twice a year. Shameful, shameful. Very thankful for Grenville for what it brought me through my formative years. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Uh, Margaret says the press briefing is on Facebook right now. Look for Eyewitness News. Uh, and Ryan says, great dialogue, George. I enjoyed it. Thank you, uh, Ryan. You guys made it possible. Maria St. Bernard says, well, it's George henceforth. Thanks for putting it out there. Well, it's George henceforth. Thanks for putting it out there. What did I put out there? Good evening, Claudia Simpson, and good evening, Kevin Mark Burkhart. Good to see you all. Yeah, folks, so I'll tell you what. Let me, uh, let me uh, take a little break here. And uh, we'll come back and wrap it up. COVID-19 spreads from person to person through the droplets that are produced when someone coughs or sneezes, which makes it easy to spread between people in close contact. Now let's get prepared to stay healthy. To reduce your chance of catching or spreading COVID-19, practice these simple everyday preventative measures. Droplets can also land on surfaces, so ensure that you wash your hands frequently for a minimum of 20 seconds or sing the happy birthday song twice. Avoid touching your face, especially your eyes, nose, and mouth. If soap and water are not readily available, use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer with an alcohol content between 60 and 90%. 70% is ideal. When you cough or sneeze, cover your nose and mouth with a flexed elbow or a tissue. Dispose of the tissue immediately and then wash your hands. If you notice someone has a fever and cough or other symptoms of respiratory illness, avoid close contact when possible. Let's all do our part to ensure that each and every Grenadian remains healthy. Our health is our collective responsibility. Two, three, seven. If you want to check the grand like balance on your phone, or report a faulty line near your home, if there is an emergency, take out your on the move, training, traveling, competing, so it's good to know I have Co-op Bank in the palm of my hand. Introducing e-banking, one of many customer convenience services from Grenada Cooperative Bank, and there's more to come. It's swift, simple, and secure. 
conveniently located in the Grand Anne Shopping Center. For over 40 years, Food Fair has provided quality service at affordable prices. Now, grocery shopping is made easier and more convenient from the Food Fair web store. Hey, babe. Hmm? Listen, uh, I need you to go down to Food Fair to get some groceries. All right, no problem. Right away. Thanks, babe. What are you doing? You're supposed to be going to Food Fair to get a grocery, man. I am. But didn't you know you can order your groceries online from the Food Fair web store? Are you serious? Of course. All you have to do is just to log on to www.foodfair.gd with credit card in hand and with an order of $100 or more, Food Fair Granans will deliver up to three miles away. And you don't even have to worry about your information, you know. The safety measures are excellent. So hold on. You just order online and Food Fair will deliver to you? Yep. Oh, baby, better hurry up and order, man. <laughs> I already did. They should be here any minute now. Enjoy easy online shopping anytime from your home or office from the Food Fair web store. Food Fair, where you can fill your baskets without emptying your pockets. Juve chocolates, cocoa nibs, and the cocoa balls from Diamond Estate Grenada are now available at Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, Amazon.co.uk, and GrenadaMarket.com. Try the sensational touch of nutmeg and a touch of ginger chocolates. 75% dark and rich, 100% pure cocoa, and the 60% dark and sweet chocolate bars today. Amazon Prime members enjoy free shipping on these orders in the USA, Canada, and Europe. GrenadaMarket.com. When you can't come to the island, the products of the island will come to you. Hello, who are you and where did you come from? Goodbye. Okay, folks, this is where we're going to pull the curtain down. It's uh, six minutes after the hour. I do appreciate you keeping me company over the past uh, hour, six minutes. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow night. Spread the word that we're here. The evening edition of Good Day Grenada. I know that a lot of you out there are worried about the coronavirus, but uh, I'm taking it in stride. I'm, I'm not going to get sick or stress myself out worrying about the virus. I just do the things that I've been asked to do and not do the things that I've been asked not to do. And I leave it all in God's hands. That's all I've got. God bless you. And again, by his grace, let's get together again tomorrow, 8 o'clock. Bonsoir.